I'm Kay and I'm a late bloomer. Two goals I set for the late bloomer garden this summer were to have the biggest garden yet and the most biodiverse. We'll take a look at the garden and see how I'm doing. But first, what is biodiversity? Why is it important? And how do we get it? This layer of living organisms, the biosphere, through the collective metabolic activities of its innumerable plants, animals, and microbes, physically and chemically unites the atmosphere, geosphere, and hydrosphere into one environmental system within which millions of species, including humans, have thrived. Breathable air, potable water, fertile soils, productive lands, bountiful seas, the equitable climate of Earth's recent history, and other ecosystem services are manifestations of the workings of life. It follows that large-scale human influences over this biosphere have tremendous impacts on human well-being. It also follows that the nature of these impacts, good or bad, is within the power of humans to influence. Greenfacts.org I don't know if I use the word uh, balance. I mean, there's like, it doesn't have to be any way. It was one way, and now people have changed it. This is my friend, Dr. Jim Hogue. And Jim, tell uh, my audience what you do. Uh, I work here in the Department of Biology at California State University, Northridge. And my main job here is I'm our collections manager. And I take care of uh, collections of specimens of insects and plants and reptiles and amphibians and birds and mammals. What is biodiversity? Can you tell me? The entirety of all of the living material and their associations on our planet from ecosystems and communities of organisms down to the their genes their, the, the genes that and the products of those genes all of that is what is thought of or considered to be biodiversity all of life in its entirety and all of its parts and all of its products when things get out of balance people often reach for chemicals to solve problems that may be a temporary fix but other things like soil microorganisms may be adversely affected, sort of like the side effects from taking medications. So much of what you see is, is not natural landscapes. They're agricultural landscapes, and it's very different than what you see in natural landscapes. Much more homogeneous, and uh, uh, this biodiversity that we're talking about is much reduced. So in some instances the landscape is is literally a monoculture of one kind of organism typically some plant and that's all there is living in that one particular place and that's very different from the natural world yeah the trick is to find out some way that we can do both of those things without destroying one or the one or the other because we can't we can't do it without modern agriculture but we also can't do without biodiversity and natural ecosystems, even though us human beings tend to behave as if we could. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's why us humans have gardens, and one of the things we like about gardens is that they are not just one thing, they are lots of things, and they're continually changing. Um, they also interact with the rest of the world, and it makes our life uh, interesting and rewarding. Our gardens produce things that we can eat, but they also produce things that we just see and we spend time with. And, and that makes us happy because we are part of biodiversity. That's our home. <laughs> Nowhere is it better to initiate biodiversity than in your own garden. Plus, it's empowering to know that you're making a positive difference to the biosphere. So, how do we do that? <laughs> Take out your lawn and grow food there. I met a biodynamic farmer in 2012 and he told me to take out my lawn and my bushes, plant two citrus trees, surround them with herbs, and once I did that, I never looked back. And now, 
I have a micro farm in my front yard. Develop your soil. The easiest way to do that is with wood chip mulching, which suppresses weeds and conserves water. And it saves your back from a lot of hard digging. Connect with seed savers. Join the online garden community and start sharing seeds and knowledge. Mix it up. Plant fruit and nut trees, berries, veggies, annuals, perennials, and lots of flowers for the pollinators. Speaking of pollinators, plant milkweed for the monarchs. The monarch butterfly is North America's most iconic pollinator and most beautiful butterfly. They cover thousands of miles in their fall migration. However, the majority of wild milkweed has been killed with chemicals. And after a tenfold drop in the eastern monarch population, the probability is high. It will go extinct in 20 years. So it's up to us home gardeners to plant milkweed to supply the monarch butterfly because the females only lay eggs on milkweed because that's all the caterpillars will eat. So plant milkweed native to your area and help the monarch butterfly. Filter your tap water. City water is loaded with salts and chemicals that destroy soil biology. Create habitat for wildlife except raccoons and moles and voles and groundhogs and bunny rabbits and deer and rats. Make or buy your own bee home. Worm tower. Hummingbird feeder. Bird bath, bat house. <laughs> I'm very excited about my bat house. I hope they find me. A recent trip to Phoenix to visit Jack Davis's permaculture style Epic Yard Farm Garden inspired me to look for more opportunities to create dense blocks of multi species plantings. But I cannot plant anything under my tomatoes like she does because I have such a problem with powdery mildew. So you have to find what's right for your garden and your weather and your zone. I was asked recently why I have so much borage. Well, once you plant borage, you never have to plant it again. It just self-seeds everywhere. But it protects your tomatoes peppers, eggplant, from the tomato and tobacco hornworm. So there's the balance. <laughs> Someone remarked recently at all the different varieties of plants I've got growing this year and encouraged me to take a 2016 census. Now, keeping track of the names of the plants that I'm growing is one of my greatest challenges. I start out well with all those little plant tags and by the time things get potted up twice I don't know what anything is but here goes
half the things I'm growing this year people sent me. So if you recognize your stuff, please let me know. <laughs> So, how did I do with the biggest garden ever? This shortage of space and desire to have a packed garden has required purchased compost and organic amendments. But Patrick at One Yard Revolution has inspired my goal for next year to use no purchased amendments. After summer season ends, I plan to pile the rest of my wood chips on my beds to break down over winter and let the biodiversity build. <laughs> If you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up and share with a friend. I'm Kay, I'm a late bloomer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>